What's up y'all and welcome to the Runaway Ranch. For those of you that don't know, we are a 39 acre fully off-grid homestead here in Tennessee and we run fully off of solar. 4,800 watts of solar is what runs our day-to-day -day operations here. But often we find ourselves in places that we can't run an extension cord to where we need power to work on our projects. This means we're often using portable power stations. And over the past year on our homestead, we've used many different brands of portable power stations. And this is a space that DJI wasn't previously in, but we've been using DJI products for years. If you've ever admired a drone shot on one of our other videos, that was filmed on a DJI drone. In fact, this entire video today is being filmed on a DJI vlogging camera. And that's why when they reached out to us, we were really excited to try out their new product line of portable power stations. And today, I'll be comparing the new DJI Power 1000 with a very reputable and comparable product by EcoFlow, the EcoFlow Delta 2. The Power 1000 is one of two portable power stations that DJI now has in their lineup. The other is the Power 500. Now this is separate from the two units that we're gonna be comparing deeply today, but I had to pause and give a shout out because I love this little unit. It weighs just 16 pounds, which makes it extremely portable, but it's not spec so small that it limits its actual functionality. This has a 1000 watt inverter and a 512 watt hour battery storage capacity, which to me is insane for being packed in such a small portable unit. And if you care about form, it's one of the best looking power stations I've seen in my opinion. But back to what we're actually here to talk about, the DJI Power 1000 and the EcoFlow Delta II. And on paper, these two stack up pretty closely. But as you can tell, their design is incredibly different. The Power 1000 is a sleek, single color toned, short and wide unit that looks like it would blend seamlessly into its surroundings. The Delta II seems to shout a little more of a, look at me, I'm a cool piece of technology. It has a design that puts its ports on two different sides of the unit, which personally, I'm not a huge fan of. The Power 1000 sports a more typical one-sided output port access. The advantage of this design for the EcoFlow is that it gives you a larger number of total output ports. On this side, you have four two-prong outlets and two three-pronged outlets. This side also has your power input ports and oddly enough, your car outlet output. I only say oddly enough because it seems like they tried to balance AC power output on one side and DC power output on the other side, but this was the one exception on the AC power side. On the other side, you have your display screen, four total USB outputs, two of which are fast charging, and two USB-C 100 watt ports. The DJI Power 1000 has two three-prong AC outputs, two USB fast charge outputs, and two 140 watt USB-C outputs. Now I'm gonna pause there for a second because I thought this was pretty wild. I don't think I've seen as much as 140 watt power output via USB-C on any power station before, so that's a pretty cool feature. This also has one normal SDC port and one SDC light port. Now to be honest, I actually don't know that much about SDC ports, but this is the first power station that I've seen that has them, and I do know that it allows compatibility with fast charging for DJI's drones. Now one negative note on the power outputs on this is that there isn't a car power outlet or a cigarette outlet. You'll actually have to buy a $22 adapter that would allow you to have access to this. This is only gonna be a problem if you use devices that you do need that car power adapter for. Now what's under the hood? The Power 1000 has a 2200 watt continuous power output inverter, and they actually also say that you can power 2600 watts for a maximum of 30 seconds, which is pretty cool. And it has a peak power output of 4400 watts. And the Delta II is a little bit weaker in this category with 1800 watts of continuous output and just 2700 watts of peak output. This does mean that although you have more AC power outlets on this, you can't power quite as much. But let's double back quickly to the Power 1000's claim of 2600 watts over the normal 2200 watt continuous, but the 2600 watt output for up to 30 seconds, again, with the 4400 peak wattage capacity. It's the first time I've ever seen a power station uh, make a claim like that, so I'm really interested to see how this works. 
So if you look here, we have the 30 amp cord that plugs into our camper and provides all of the power just using this 20 amp outlet adapter uh, plugged into the Power 1000. And currently I have the air conditioner running within the camper. And if you look on the screen, you see that the current AC output is 1500 watts. And what I plan to do to get up to this 2600 watts is plug the... Interruptions. Uh, we'll be plugging the Delta II into the Power 1000 to make up for another 1200 watts, which will actually, in theory, put us at 2700 watts, which is over the claim, but let's see how that works. All right, plugged in, and we will start the timer. Clock is rolling, let's see what happens. Right away, we're up to 2500 watts, over 2600 watts now. Okay, we're at 18 seconds so far, and we're at 2,691, so over the claim 2,600. And if you look on the time, we're now over 30 seconds, and if you look at the output, actually over the 2,600 watt claim, pushing 2,725 watts. That's crazy, that's overperforming. We're now almost at a minute. Running this test, we had a constant output of 2,600 to 2,700 watts at over a minute. And I really like when brands kind of like make an understatement to what the product can do. And that's exactly what we can see here. And another note that I'd like to make about this is the Power 1000 says that it puts out 23 decibels of noise. It's a pretty quiet unit. <laughs> not like our roosters that you've been hearing in the background. Um, but that entire time that it was running, I can vouch for the fact that I did, for the first time using this unit, actually hear the fan kick on, because in prior usage, I never heard it click on. Um, but it was pretty quiet for the fact that it was putting out that much power. Now for battery storage capacity, these two power stations are identical at 1,024 watts. But the EcoFlow Delta II has one advantage here. You are able to expand this battery bank with a separate EcoFlow battery. But when the power runs out of these batteries, how do you go about recharging them? Well, for AC charging, the EcoFlow Delta II supports very fast charging at 1200 watts of inbound power to charge it. And the Power 1000 actually mirrors this 1200 watts of inbound power, but it does have one cool additional feature. In addition to the 1200 watt fast charging, you can actually flip it over and charge at a slower rate of 600 watts. Now why on earth would you ever want to charge the power station slower? Well, if you're plugging this into a house outlet, 1200 watts could easily trip a 15 amp or a 20 amp breaker if there's any other moderate loads on that same switch. If you flip it down to the slower rate of 600 watts, you almost guarantee that you're not going to trip a breaker. We charge with extension cords a lot here. And if you're using something like this 16 gauge 100 foot extension cord to charge this power station at 1200 watts, you're actually maxing out the amperage rating for this cord. This means that you could run into voltage drop issues or overheat your extension cord. Again, you could either get a bigger gauge extension cord or simply flip that charge rate down to 600 watts and you'll have no problems. Now, solar charging is actually the category that disappoints me the most in both of these units. Not necessarily with input capacity, as the Power 1000 allows 800 watts of solar charging, which is a pretty good number for a power station of this size, and the Delta II allows for 500 watts of input of solar power. But what disappoints me the most, neither of these power stations comes out of the box in their base package with what you need to charge them through solar. For the Power 1000, you'll need to purchase a $59 MPPT module, and you'll have to make sure that you have a compatible cable to plug your solar panel into this module. You'll only be able to achieve 400 watts of solar input, but you can connect two different modules to achieve the full 800 watts. That being said, 400 watts is plenty of solar input for a unit of this size. And what I like about this module is that it allows you to easily connect up to three different solar panels per module. And for the EcoFlow Delta II, you'll need to order a $25 adapter to allow you to plug into the solar input. And I'll note that both of these products do have solar charging package options on their website. And last but not least, let's talk about price. When you go to both EcoFlow and DJI's website, 
Both of these units market sale price is $999. But with almost every power station brand that I've ever seen, the normal retail price is never the price that's gonna be on the website. There's always gonna be some sort of discount. And at the time of making this video, the EcoFlow Delta II is discounted down to $499, and the DJI Power 1000 is discounted to $599. You're getting some pretty cool additional features with the Power 1000, and you're getting a much more powerful inverter, so I think that's pretty reflective of the price difference. Ultimately, at these prices, I think both of these power stations are very good buys, and I'm interested to know, comment below, which power station, the DJI Power 1000 or the EcoFlow Delta II, do you think would best fit your use case? But that's enough talking about power stations. It's time to get some projects done. See you next time, friends.